so get ready for a deep dive, and I mean deep, into the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. Buckle up. Right, we're talking intricate societal structures, leadership styles that still resonate today. And we're diving in using this really cool source, a story about Haudenosaunee society. Yeah, it's not your typical history book, that's for sure. What's interesting to me is the story uses something as simple as a dream to talk about these big ideas, leadership, decision-making, and how connected the Haudenosaunee were to the earth. You know me, always up for a good dream sequence. Mm -hmm. So we meet Santi, and she keeps having these vivid dreams, right, about an old woman who needs to rest. Classic dream setup. But her grandmother, Gantueza, who's a powerful clan mother, by the way, she senses there's something more to it. This is where it gets really interesting. A lot of cultures, they see dreams as messages, especially dreams tied to nature. Like their subconscious is sending a telegram, right? Exactly. And in this case, Gantuiza, she thinks the message might be about their land. The story kind of hints that the village might have to relocate because they're running out of resources. Like that feeling when you know you got to move apartments, but you keep putting it off. But with much higher stakes. Remember, the Haudenosaunee, they depended on the land. It was everything to them. And that's where the three sisters come in, yeah. right? Corn, beans, and squash all planted together. Yeah. It's not just good gardening, it's a carefully crafted system. Totally. A system rooted in a deep understanding of the land. If the soil was bad, it wasn't just an inconvenience, it was a threat to their whole way of life. So Gantuisa is worried about this dream. And it's not because she's superstitious, it's because she's worried about her people. Makes you think, what would our ancestors think of how we treat the planet now? It's a good question to think about. Okay, so we've got a mysterious dream, maybe a tired earth mother, and a village that might be packing up. And this is where we really start to see how the Haudenosaunee made decisions. The wheels start turning. Big time. So they've got to make this huge decision, right? Like relocating a whole village. How do they even start something like that? Well, it's not like they could just send out an email. Or like a group text. Exactly. Their system was way more complex and honestly, pretty impressive. The story mentions these longhouses where a bunch of families would live together. And those families, they weren't just grouped randomly. They were all part of the same clan. Right, the clans. They were super important to Haudenosaunee, right? Absolutely. It's key to understanding their whole system. It wasn't like what we're used to. With family lines on the father's side, theirs was matrilineal. So everything went through the mother's line. So that had a big impact on how they chose their leaders then, I'm guessing? Huge impact. Think about Gantuiza, right? She's not just some random elder. She's a clan mother. That's real power. And the story shows that, like... She's not just sitting around worrying. She's out there talking to the hunters, checking the crops. Where she's gathering evidence, yeah. right. But instead of figuring out a crime, she's trying to figure out what the earth is saying. Trying to read the signs. And don't forget, the clan mothers, they were the ones who had a say in choosing their leaders. Those leaders were called Hoyana. It's all there in the story. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Hoyana. They were like the big chiefs. Exactly. But imagine being chosen for that role, not because you inherited it or took it by force, but because... The clan mothers. Because they thought you were the best person for the job. Exactly. That says a lot, don't you think? It's a pretty big vote of confidence. Mm -hmm. So, okay, what could the Hoyana actually do? Could they just make any decision they wanted? Well, here's the thing. They were respected, right? But they weren't all powerful, which is fascinating. The story makes it clear they couldn't just decide something on their own. Huh. So there were checks on their power. Oh, yeah, lots of them. There's this whole other level, the Grand Council. It was made up of 50 chiefs, all from the different Haudenosaunee nations. 50. Wow. That's a lot of chiefs in one room. Can you imagine those meetings? I bet they could get intense. That many people. All with their own opinions. Exactly. And that's kind of the point. It was about bringing all those opinions together, finding some kind of agreement. So the Grand Council, they were the ones who handled the big stuff, right? Like if they were going to war or making treaties. Right. Big picture stuff that affected everyone. But if it was about something like deciding to move a village to better land, that would be up to the Hoyana. Okay, but they'd still listen to the clan mothers, right? Oh, absolutely. Especially someone like Gantuiza who understood the land so well. They depended on that. It's like they had this system where everyone's knowledge was important. You got the clan mothers, the Hoyana, the Grand Council. They all had a role. And they relied on each other. To me, that's a huge part of what the story is trying to say about leadership. It's not just about having power. It's about knowing when to listen, who to listen to, 
Right. And respecting that knowledge, even if it comes from a different place and that that never gets old. And the story actually connects that to leadership today, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I was going to say it, it doesn't shy away from comparing the Haudenosaunee way to how we think about leadership now. It talks about honesty and patience. Kindness. Yeah, kindness, treating people with respect, all these things that make a good leader. But then it compares those to modern leadership. And it makes you wonder, like, have things really changed that much? It's a great question. Like, some things never change, right? You need yeah. to be honest. You need to have integrity. You got to listen to people. Definitely. But the world is different now, right? Everything's faster, more information. So much information. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it feels like you're drowning in it. And leaders today, they have to deal with that. They need that same core of honesty and all that. But they also need to be able to adapt, see what's coming next, even when things are uncertain. Yes, yeah, like they have to be guardians of the past and trailblazers for the future. That's a tough job. It is. And the story, it doesn't just talk about this stuff generally. It gives an example. Roberta Jameson, a Mohawk woman. Oh, yeah, Roberta Jameson. I'd heard of her. But the story really made her come to life, being chief of the Six Nations and Ontario's ombudsman. It's incredible, right? All those values, all that tradition. And she carried it with her into these important roles. Exactly. It shows that these values, they still matter. They can make a real difference. Absolutely. Look at what she accomplished, advocating for indigenous rights, fighting for justice. You can see those values in everything she did. Makes you realize the Haudenosaunee, their story isn't just ancient history. It's still relevant. Yeah. Still has things to teach us. A hundred percent. So next time you're reading the news or dealing with, well, anything really, Think about this. What would the Haudenosaunee do? How would they approach this problem? That's a really interesting way to think about it. Yeah. Because their values, they're all about balance. Right. Respect for everyone, respect for the earth. Exactly. It's a good reminder, I think, especially these days. It really is. Well, on that note, I think we'll wrap up this deep dive. As always, keep those brains buzzing, and we'll catch you next time.